Hello and welcome to a brand new series on the channel, the Lincoln Loco with of course my favourite team in the world, Lincoln City and we're going all the way to the Champions League. Welcome to the Lincoln Loco. This is the main save on the channel for Foot Manager 2018. It's the release date of Foot Manager. And I'm very excited to be here as the boss of Lincoln City. It's, of course, the team I support, so it's going to be even more special to me. As it's the first episode of a new series, let's go for a like target of 25 likes on this video. I'd love to see that on this first video. So if we can reach that, I'll be absolutely amazed. So here we are sitting here. If you watch the trailer for this, you'll know that the reason we are Lincoln City manager is because Danny Cowley and Nicky Cowley, the current manager of Lincoln City, have been approached by England for the job. If we actually go to England, uh, I've made a little custom database where um, if we look at England, their manager is Danny Cowley. If we go to, to staff, if we can find that staff all, it says manager is Nicky Cowley. They have actually moved there. Um, Southgate's gone and Danny and Nicky Cowley are going to be the England managers. So we'll monitor that as well because it'll be interesting to see how they do as England managers. But that's the reason that we've come in as the Lincoln manager because they've gone. So this episode then is going to be a nice little introduction, I think. We're going to do a little introductory thing. We're going to meet the team, uh, have a look at the club as a whole, the dynamics, obviously, of the new squad, uh, and kind of what the plans are going forward. So I think the logical step to do now is we've seen that we're now manager of Lincoln. Uh, let's have a look at the team and what we're working with here. So Lincoln have a very good side, to be fair, in my opinion. I know I'm a fan and I'm a bit biased, but we do have a decent side. I'm going to take through the key players that we've got. Uh, the keyest of all key players, especially on football manager, is Michael Bostwick. Now, he was brought in over summer by uh, Danny and Nicky Cowley. Uh, last season was played at Peterborough United in League One all season, was their player of the season uh, last year at Peterborough, and then decided to join us. So, I'm not sure how that happened, but we, we've got him, and I'm over the moon to have him. Uh, as you can see on his reports here, he is a leading player for League One sides. So it's incredible that he's actually here at the club. In real life, he plays more midfield for us. But on football manager, his best position is centre-back. However, I think we will be using him more in the midfield. That's kind of where I, I, I see him as a player. That's kind of what I wanted to use him as. But he's got some really good stats on him, particularly in the mental area. Some really good mental stats there. Physical is still pretty good for a 29-year-old. He's in his prime, I suppose, now. So we'll get a good few seasons out of him before he starts to deteriorate. Uh, technicals. A little bit to be desired for, I suppose, in these top ones here, but he's a midfielder and defender. You're not like you're going to need finishing or dribbling all that much, really, are you? Going back then to the player list, uh, Sean Raggett is uh, our key defender. He's a fantastic player. He's on loan to us at the moment from Norwich. Uh, he was our player last season, uh, did fantastically well, phenomenally well, did so well for us, especially in the FA Cup run we had last year. It would himself a move to Norwich for £350,000, and he's on loan with us until January now. Uh, in real life, it's kind of looking like he's going to go back to Norwich in January rather than stay for the rest of the season. I think that's what's going to happen in-game as well. So we'll have to look at replacements at him at some point. But Sean Raggett, uh, a fantastic player for us. Potential to be a good League One potential defender in the future, apparently. Now, I think he's got a bigger future than that. I think he could play at the top level, in my opinion. But for now, I'm very happy with him playing for us in League Two, leading League Two player. So he's going to be solid at the back for us until January, at least. I'm going to talk manager, then the third best player that we've got, Alex Woodyard. Also, another fantastic player, a center central midfielder. We've got a really strong central midfield duo. We had to build the squad, I think, around Woodyard and Boswick this season. But a really good player. Came to us with Danny Cowley after he left Braintree. Uh, a really solid player, I think. According to football manager, he's at his peak now at 24 years old, which is a bit iffy, I think. He's a decent player for the League One side. So, again, we've got League One quality players here. Uh, but in my opinion, he's got a lot of potential to go forward, I think. Championship in future, I think that's what you could do in real life. So we'll have to see what happens really with uh, Alex Woodyard. But a really, really good player plays more of these new roles, actually, to be fair. So I'm interested to implement these new roles into the game, see what they kind of do. But a very decent player, of course. He's also the captain of the club, so he's a key player for us. Going to be playing most games this season, I think. And hopefully, uh, if we do get promotion in the season, he'll stay with us again and be solid in League One, too. I think so. He's going to be around for a good few years, I think. Some of the good players around here, around the top of the uh, ability squads there, uh, Neil Eardley to come in, he's a, a right back, the only right back at the club at the moment, um, which is actually a light, it's the only left back we've got at the moment, we've got one left back, we've got a few right backs, it's left back we're struggling on, uh, but Eardley coming in there, he's a decent player, former Welsh international player, Waterfall, another defender, Dickey on loan, another defender, so we, as you can see, defensively we are really, really strong, uh, it gets to the strikers, we're a little bit short, uh, Elliot Whitehouse though, always seems to be a lot better in football manager than he does in real life 
if we're being honest. He doesn't really get much of a chance in real life, in my opinion, but football managers seem to rate him quite highly. Last year, he was always Lincoln's best player, uh, but he comes in as a ball-winning midfielder or a shadow striker. I'd say in real life, he's more of an attacking midfielder than a central midfielder, but obviously football manager seems to know better. Again, a decent player, still quite young. He's a player that we're going to look to use quite a bit because we've got a few players who can play really well in that central midfield. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot of defenders as well, so we're sort of sorted there in that term. It's then when we get down here to Matt Green, who is uh, the best striker at the club. At three and a half star, he's, he's good still. He's still a good player, not the best though. And so we look at his stats. He's an advanced forward. Finishing is good. Dribbling is good. That's you know that's important. Good composure as well. The stats that matter are good. It's just his other stats uh, that aren't really great, if we're being honest here. He's currently a good player for most League Two sides. And if we want to do well this season, then we're going to need players who are better than just good for League Two. So a striker is someone I'm definitely looking to bring in over pre-season uh, as we go forward. As you can see here, he's the best striker. Matt Reed and Ollie Palmer are the second two uh, strikers that we've got. Only got three strikers at the club. This is where we're falling down in real life. Uh, as I record this. We're currently playing Crew Alexandra in real life, and I think we're one nil down to them at the moment. And I don't think we're going to win because we don't have any decent strikers, you know, that are scoring goals in real life. Uh, Matt Reed was fantastic for us the past two seasons, uh, twenty goals and fifteen goals respectively for him in his first two seasons at the club. But he's getting old now, thirty three years old. Uh, he's not getting any better really. And according to these reports, he's a leading player for the National League below us as is Oli Palmer. He is also a leading player for National League sides. So striking is somewhere we're going to have to try and improve quickly, I think. So that's the area that I want to look at first and foremost if we get back to the squad list. So strikers, uh, as we scroll down here, you can see a few more players, fringe players. We've got a lot of midfield players, uh, the strikers, a few guys on the wings. Now, this is where we're, we're going to have to struggle a little bit. We're going to have to get some wingers in uh, because we've got Harry Anderson, who is a decent player for us. He could do quite well. He plays on that right-hand side as a right midfielder as opposed to a winger. But he is the best winger at the club and he's only three-star current ability, which is a little bit iffy if we're going forward with that. Um, Nathan Arnold is on the left-hand side, but again, he's he's much further down the list. In fact, where even is he? I can't even... There he is, Nathan Arnold, just below Harry Anderson. He plays on the left-hand side. And he plays on the right more, I suppose, but left-hand side as well. Three-star current ability player. Again, these wingers are something we're going to have to improve on, especially with uh, Josh Nelly and Jordan Maguire Drew coming in as second fielders. Only two-and-a-half-star current ability. This is an area that we need to strengthen as well, I think, going forward. So wingers and strikers are what we're going to have to look for over the transfer window. Vickers and Farman are going to be competing for goalkeeping this season, but it's probably going to be Vickers on the grounds that he's younger and has got potential. So Vickers is probably going to be the starting goalkeeper for us this season. Farman, although I love him to bits, will probably be on the bench just based on the stats this season, I'm afraid. Uh, if we look further down here, I'm a Lincoln fan, but I genuinely have no idea who Jack McMenny is or Josh Burns are. Uh, they're 16 and 18 respectively. Richard Walton also a goalkeeper, they're not going to play games, so I'm actually going to move them all down to the uh, under 18s right now on the grounds that I'm not going to use them. So that's the squad then, that's a brief overview of the squad, we'll get to know these players more as we go forward, but um, they're the key players that have sort of signalled out there and players that are sort of fighting for their place I think, we have to try and replace them at some point. Uh, we'll look at the quick look at the squad dynamics now, now as you can see here, Match cohesion, very, very poor. So I've actually lined up a few friendlies already for us to try and get some good match cohesion. We want to play as many friendlies as possible to get this right up to the top. Dressing room atmosphere, though, is very good. That's nice. And I've got some decent managerial support. More support in my first day of a job than I ever had at PSG, I think. So that's quite nice to see already. If we look at the hierarchy, you can see that we've only got two team leaders, Alex Woodyard and Jamie McComb. Now, Jamie McComb is... 34 years old defender who's retiring at the end of the season. He's not going to play at all. He's a very decent coach, though. His staff attributes, though, as a coach, uh, defending-wise, if we look down here at the uh, the key defending ones, apart from level of discipline, for this level, he's really good. So I'm going to try and sign him up as a coach as soon as possible, really. Ideally, before his contract ends, because he's on a lot of money per week already. Um, well, actually, that is as a coach, I suppose, maybe. I don't know. But we'll try and get that contract down a little bit, save some money. But Jamie McCoon is a player that I want to bring up. Uh, Farman and Waterfall are the only influential players that we've got, highly influential players, that is. And then we've got quite a few influential players. So I think over the transfer window, we want to try and get a few more influential and highly influential players in to try and uh, solidify a little bit to get some more leadership in the squad, I suppose. Social group-wise, there's a big core group, to be fair, a big secondary group, a uh, small social group B, and others, Michael Boswick, is the only guy who's not got any mates at the moment, but I'm sure that will change soon. It's good to see that there's quite a nice team togetherness, which is which is nice, and I think on the happiness tab, everyone should be happy so far, really. I've not done anything to, to change that right now. It's in my first day on the job, so if that, was, if that was the case, I think I'd be doing a bad job. Tactics then, and there's going to be a few tactics being trialled over pre-season and to use in real life. Now, 
This is the first of those tactics, a 4-3-3, or a 4-3-1-2 if you prefer, actually. It's probably the more better as a 4-3-1-2. Obviously, we've got a solid defence, so the back line four makes sense. We've got some really good players in the central midfield there, which is going to be good. We've got Elliot Whitehouse, as we mentioned before, can players at attack midfielder, and hopefully if we get another big striker, we could probably play Matt Green and someone else there. So I think this is a, a decent formation to play, especially as our wingers aren't the best around, so that could be a, an option for us. Uh, we've also got this formation where we can utilise the wingers out wide more advanced wingers I suppose along with Matt Green or something like that we've got a decent midfield Bostwick can come in as a C CDM there and again that back line of four so another viable tactic for us and then of course we've got the traditional 4-4-2 because we've got some decent guys on the left and right there we've got some good midfielders and 4-4-2 obviously is a decent formation so there are three formations that I'm thinking of already at the moment uh, we'll trial and error them over the pre-season and into the, into the new season as well uh, and hopefully one of them will sort of stick. But I think we have got tactics there that can fit in in different scenarios. So I'll set up the more team instruction-wise soon. But as we as we try and learn more about the team, that's when that will come in. Expectations this season then are to finish mid-table. Now in real life, the fans, as soon as we got promoted from, from National League last year, there, there was a section of the fans that just seemed to think we were going to walk League 2. Uh, another section that seemed to think that we were going to get to playoffs. And not many people think we're going to struggle. And in real life at the moment, we're not struggling. Uh, we're sitting three points out the side of the playoffs, which I think is a, an impressive achievement considering we're not really scoring many goals. So I think mid-table is a comfortable ambition for us. I think if we can get a good run of form, we may be able to sneak playoffs. I think we've got a decent side that's capable of that, but we'll have to see as uh, we come to the end of the season. Mid-table, though, is a good starting point for us, I think. Second round of the FA Cup. Um, hopefully we can get to the quarterfinals again this year like we did last year, but this is football manager, not real life. I doubt that's going to happen for us. And in the League Cup or the, the Carabao Cup, reach the first round, which we're already in, so we've achieved that already. Um, we're playing against Burton, so I doubt that's going to actually uh, achieve much. Uh, a quick look at the staff then. Obviously, because we got rid of uh, Nicky Cowley, or say got rid of, uh, because he was signed for England, that was that's the reason. Because he signed for England instead, we've got no assistant manager. So I'm going to put an advert out now, actually, for assistant manager, because I do need one. So an advert for an assistant manager is going out. Uh, but other than that, we've got a decent level of training across the, the league. We're sort of in the middle, maybe slightly below average overall. But hopefully with an assistant manager coming in, that might change. We might be slightly above average. Uh, in terms of scouting, we could do with some more staff members, to be fair. We're not that great, really. But I think uh, going forward, we should be okay. Medical team-wise, we've got the best sports scientist in the league. Uh, so that's fantastic to see, but not so good on physios. But we have got a space in the medical staff for a physio. So we're going to put an advert out for a physio as well. And hopefully that'll be, that'll be good going forward because we do need another physio. Scouting then. And this is a big change this year, obviously. Um... When I was manager of PSG, it didn't matter too much. But this year, uh, with Lincoln, you've got scouting budgets. And, and with Lincoln here, we've got a scouting budget of 33000 which isn't great. Now, if you want a good scouting guide, uh, the Northman did a really good guide on scouting, which I'm going to be using for this. So uh, there should be a link in the description to his video on scouting. You want to check that out after this video. So what this budget means then, if we go to players, player search, um, we can then click on the packages here. Now, as you can see, the current packages that we have uh, enabled that uh, were automatically put on were we can scout players across our league, uh, League One and, uh, and the Vanarama National League. So we've got the players, leagues above and league below. And uh, in terms of our youth package, that is players in our league. However, as you can see, the, the yearly budget for this, if we lift these on all season, we'd be paying £30,000 over the season and £20,000 over the season, which is more than our budget. So I think these packs have to be turned on over like the transfer windows, for example, uh, but we have to be very careful with how we're spending. So once the transfer window shuts or we've signed everyone that we want to sign, these packs are turned off and then we save some money that way. So as you can see here, we've got a lot of players uh, available to us, um, which is already confusing because we're, we're scouting League One, our league and then our National League, but players from the Championship and Premiership are coming up, which again is, is a little bit confusing considering these packs. I still haven't really nailed down what actually the packs really do, but uh, going forward, we just be careful with this with this magic number here, basically. Now, of course, I do want to point you to our fierce rivals, Grimsby. We play them fairly early on in the season. In real life, it's a nil-nil draw. Obviously, we're going to be looking for better and, and beating them in game. So look out for that game. That's going to be a really good one, to be fair. And we've also got a lot of local clubs close to us. Mansfield in our league, Notts County in our league, uh, Chesterfield in our league, Forest Green are in our league. Dover are just a league below, actually, but they could get promoted. If we don't get promoted this season, we could play them next season. So there's a lot of good derbies here that are coming up pretty soon. So uh, expect to see videos on those ones because they're going to be quite exciting. In terms of the facilities then, we've got a 10,000 seat stadium, which is really, really nice. Uh, we actually do have 
Uh, nearly 6,000 season ticket holders a season. In real life, after the FA Cup run last year, everyone just decided to support Lincoln. Now we've got 6,000 season ticket holders. So we're not going to see a lower capacity than 7,000, I don't think, this season. If we do, then I'll be very cross, unless it's Chucky Cheo Trophy. Uh, in real life, though, they are looking to build a new stadium. Uh, but that is a few years down the line, so obviously nothing's really finalised there, so nothing is going to be finalised in the game, of course. In real life, though, we are looking to build new training facilities, and I don't know if this has been factored into the game or not, and the fact that we've got good training facilities in-game, I don't know if they factored that in or not, but good training facilities is a real plus for us, because I don't think many clubs at this level are going to have good training facilities. We do want to look to, to boost the youth facilities, though, fairly soon, because I do want to bring some young players through. So in the near future, hopefully with some of this FA Cup money that we've got from last season, I'll show you the finances in a minute, uh, we could try and get some more youth facilities but the board won't let me do that yet because I've only just joined. Now affiliate clubs, now as far as I'm aware in real life there isn't an affiliation with a Lincoln club in Gibraltar but football manager seems to think there are um, but it doesn't really seem much, apparently we're the senior affiliate as well which is even more bonkers I think in a way um, but I've never seen anything that's really happened in game so don't think about that too much but we are going to look for a senior affiliate, I want to try and get some more money into the club uh, and I feel like if we get a Premier League affiliate club, then we can get some really good players on loan as well for free. So I'm going to ask the board now for a senior affiliate. And we should say we need to get players on loan without the cost of the wages. And what do they say? We agree that's a really good thing. So hopefully they'll be looking for a senior affiliate pretty soon and we can get some more money into the club and some more players that way. Finally then, a little look at the finances going forward. 2.2 million in the bank. Uh, I would imagine... More than 2.2 million of that is from the FA Cup last year. I think we were in a bit of a bad place financially before the FA Cup, and that sort of saved us. So that is really nice to see. Unfortunately, though, according to the projections, that's going to go down to... We're going to lose 2 million this season, apparently. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think, going forward, I'm going to be able to save money and make money in different ways. So I don't think we're going to see that bad of a projection at the end of the year. Hopefully, we'll be above a million still, because that'd be quite nice. Uh, Sponsorship-wise, though, a lot of these sponsorships end at the end of the year. Not that they're much money anyway in the first place, but most of these do end at the end of the season, so uh, hopefully next season we'll get some big boost in the, in the sponsorship money as well. I mean, if you're interested as well, under-18 squad, there's no one decent. Ellis Chapman is sort of the best player that we've got, but only at four-star potential. He's not going to be played too much, I don't think, in this series. So don't expect any of the youth prospects to come through just yet. Right, that's it for this episode then. We've had a little meet the team and a meet the club type thing. Uh, next episode then, we're going to play pre-season off camera because that's a little bit boring for you. But next episode, we're going to do Wickham Wanderers, the first game of the season. I think we'll probably do Burton as well in the first round of the, the League Cup as well. That'd be interesting. So join me then for when we play Burton and Wickham. Now, I want to stress something importantly as well here. Um, this series is going to run five days a week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. There we go. However, I am going to get the opportunity to have bonus episodes on the weekend. So if you want a bonus episode on a Saturday or Sunday, then we're going to have to have a likes target each week. So for this first week, I'm going to say let's have a target of 50 likes across all videos this week, starting from, from Monday, obviously this episode. Uh, if by Friday there's 50 likes, then there'll be a bonus episode on the weekend, and then next week we'll have a higher like target. And that is basically what's going to happen throughout the rest of the series. So if you want bonus episodes, like the videos. Thank you very much for watching this first episode then of the Lincoln Loco. I will see you tomorrow for the first game of the season. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you tomorrow.